Greetings, Legionnaires! Today I come with news of my lengthy encounter with Persona 5, a game that hopes to provide a compelling story with some flashy combat. But does it deliver? Well, I'll provide all that information and more in my report, which will contain a brief interlude on the plot, the highlights, and the shortcomings. You play as an unnamed male sophomore in high school who gets transferred to Shujin Academy. Upon arrival, he's met with rumors and strange looks from other students due to a recent run-in with the law. Eventually, he meets Ryuji, a brash but earnest peer with whom he forms a bond, seeing as both are outcasts to some degree. Both young men draw the ire of Kamoshida, an oppressive physical education teacher who enjoys tormenting students both physically and mentally. With no way to alter reality or prevent Kamoshida from expelling them, it seems as if they are all out of options. That is, until they cross paths with a mysterious talking cat named Morgana. With the help of their feline friend, this unlikely trio enters the metaverse, a land where the twisted desires of humans takes physical form of an imposing palace. If the treasure of any palace is stolen, the fortress crumbles and the individual in real life will confess all their crimes. To infiltrate and defeat the guards protecting any given citadel, our protagonists awaken the power of personas, the latent rebellious nature within them. This allows them to wield magic and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other demons prowling around each stronghold. Although usually only one persona can be wielded by an individual, the main protagonist has the ability to absorb other personas after weakening them in battle. These personas can later be combined to create new creatures with even more powerful abilities. Using these newly acquired powers, it's up to this motley gang to steal Kamoshida's treasure and avoid expulsion. Although this rogue gym teacher seems like the scummiest person in all of Tokyo, he's just the beginning of a long line of cruel adults and a sinister plot that needs to be brought to justice by the newly forged Phantom Thieves. Let's begin as always with the highlights that make this particular title stand out. First and foremost is the art and overall style of the game. It's gorgeous and prevalent in every aspect. Everything from the characters, to the settings, the enemies, the text messages, and even the menu screens are bursting with flair. Special mention has to go to the outstanding designs of the personas themselves, with the top prize being stolen by Captain Kid. This stylishness even bleeds over into the animated cutscenes you're rewarded with after completing a dungeon in the game. Basically, this is as close to playing out an actual vibrant anime since the birth of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series. The art design itself is only bolstered by a stellar soundtrack that rarely misses a beat, and does a great job of reflecting the mood of any given situation. All these facets lend themselves to the interesting dichotomy the game offers. On a normal day, you go to school, hang out with friends, or maybe even partake in a fun side activity to strengthen one of five stats. These statistics allow you to forge stronger bonds with your teammates and unlock special abilities to aid you in the metaverse. When a new target is chosen for the team to pursue, you're given a set number of days to accomplish the task of stealing the treasure before it's lights out for the phantoms. Deciding between pushing on ahead in a palace on any given day or foregoing that for other pursuits in the early game is both fun and stressful in the best way possible. During your time in the metaverse, you'll engage in hectic and fast-paced combat that can be over within seconds. This factor alone makes grinding and exploring much more enticing compared to other typical JRPGs. If you're able to decipher a persona's weakness, you can issue an immensely satisfying all-out attack or take your chance and attempt to recruit them. These options make encounters feel fresh even until the very end of the game. Finally, the voice acting is actually quite good. Each character is believable and always brings different viewpoints to the game. Unfortunately, Persona 5 is not without its fair share of flaws, the biggest being the misuse of the main character. A completely blank slate which you, the player, are supposed to take the place of and personally name isn't something drastically new. But for some odd reason, they chose to make him basically mute while still hiring a voice actor to deliver certain lines. Truly, giving the young man a predetermined name and making him fully voiced would have gone a long way to help bolster the point that this is a character-driven series. It also doesn't help that the protagonist seems overtly cool always and usually lacks any emotional responsiveness. Although I mentioned earlier that the voice acting is great, there still is a lot of unnecessary repetition of dialogue that is completely text-based. The default setting for this makes the player press the X button after every line. This means that some nights, you would spend a good two hours just pressing X again and again. There's a workaround in the settings that makes the dialogue, spoken and text alike, progress automatically. But without this knowledge, the story can feel like quite the slog. While choice is a key factor in this game, the narrative tends to lead you around by the nose, which can be rather frustrating when all you want to do is explore Tokyo in your first few weeks. This leads to possibly the other worst aspect of the game in that it feels overly formulaic and unbalanced. 
The story is always the same. Get new target, infiltrate new palace, defeat target as soon as possible, and have 10 days to kill while you wait to witness the result of your work. This imbalance is strangely player derived, but the need to finish the mission quickly with your comrades constantly texting you about it is inescapable. These issues wouldn't be as irksome in a 40 to 60 hour game, but when the average play times are roughly 100 hours, it can feel exhausting and tedious. Lastly, while the palace designs are interesting, they are very archaic in execution. Many times it felt like playing a higher resolution PlayStation 2 title. This is most likely due to the fact that it did launch on PlayStation 3, but the mechanics and even some of the textures felt compromised on PS4. Regardless of that myriad of qualms, Persona 5 is a wonderful game. The visually arresting art style, most all of the characters, and fluid combat make it stand out amongst its other role-playing peers. However, outdated implementation of both the main character and dungeons alike keep this entry from its highest potential. Either way, the Phantom Thieves won't just steal your heart, but also hours upon hours of your life as well. Legionnaires! Agree with my review? Let me know in the comments below and share your own personal thoughts on the game. If you want to help bolster our ranks, share this review with a buddy, or subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to check us out on Patreon.com slash Critical Reviews to help aid in our endeavor to deliver fair and fun tactical reports. Thanks for dropping by, and remember to adapt and overcome.